Hello, my beautiful ladies. Today, I want to talk about three signs where you may be in survival mode. One is you're getting poor sleep. Two is you have no consistent weekly exercise routines. Um, maybe you have it in your calendar, but things come up and by Friday, you haven't worked out at all. Number three is poor eating habits. So a couple of suggestions and how I was able to get myself to a better place with these. If you do find that you have fallen into survival mode and really sleep, movement, and what we put in our bodies are kind of the three key pillars to telling our brain if we are safe or not. Are we able to access food? that's nutritious. Are we able to sleep, right? And if we're not, there must be a reason. Um, and the movement, I feel like, really has come around the knowledge worker um, phase now that we're in and being in front of computers. This is not how we were designed to live throughout our day. And so we're needing to find practices and ways to still find ways to be healthy while also being in modern day society. But what is that going to take? It's going to take doing things differently and getting creative. So when I was getting little sleep, um, some things that helped me was listening to relaxing music. I would find um, a playlist on something like Spotify, or I would download download an album. And oftentimes this can serve as a time cue giver um, because of our circadian rhythms. Even listening to the same music can signal to our brain, oh, it's time to rest now. Oh, it's time to sleep. And another side helpful thing, if you were like me before I learned how to quiet my mind and quiet the chatter and I wasn't there yet. If you still find yourself thinking about what you need to do tomorrow or you know what your to-do list is for the week while you're trying to go to sleep, replacing those words with something. Because when we haven't learned how to quiet our minds, our minds need something to focus on. And so giving it the relaxing music replaces the need for the words and the to-do lists and what should I be doing, right? Or the worrying. And so this was very helpful. Second thing that was helpful was to make sure that I took a warm shower right before going to bed. And then I went to bed soon after. This helps, um, this helps calm the body. And so that was very helpful. And I had to be very diligent because you can't take a warm shower and then go and do five things and then try to go to bed. It needed to be right before I was going to bed to help signal to my body, okay, it is time and it's okay for rest and for sleep. Now, if you're a new parent or a parent, um, just do the best you can. <laughs> I know that it doesn't feel like great advice, but um, things that I did was sometimes I asked my life partner to trade off with me, maybe on the weekends, if the baby woke up or letting me sleep in just to help me get a little bit of extra rest. Um, maybe assigning and like one person takes so many nights and then the other person takes, you know, wide number of nights and you split it up kind of in shifts in a way. Um, a third thing that I did, if I really couldn't get sleep and I was really struggling and it was throwing me back into survival mode and trust me, it was not helpful for my relationship to be in this place because I was short, I cut my husband off, um, I was constantly trying to control everything because honestly, I was so tired and just trying to make sure things got done. But over the long term, that was not helpful for myself, 
for my relationship or for my family. So one thing I did a, a little bit later down the road, um, you know, once the baby was one or a little bit over one, was I did staycations. And this allowed me, I would just go to a nearby hotel and I would also offer this for my husband um, so he could get the same. And yeah, it just allowed for me to step away because when the baby can sense that you're in the home, somehow I feel like it can sense you through the walls. And so the baby knows you're there. There's a probably, there's a good reason for this from a survival standpoint. Um, this high sensitivity and knowing where the mother and the father are or that they're close by and they can cry and call out to them. But when you've gone through long periods of hardly any sleep, um, this can move into a very unhealthy place. And so if you can help it, um, you know, giving both of, you know, the partner and yourself the opportunity to do a staycation one time a year or even two times a year, um, and especially if you're not getting sleep, going on a trip, it sometimes a staycation was better for me. And I actually, if I wasn't able to fully sleep, I was at least able to get uninterrupted rest. And do not underestimate the power of uninterrupted rest. It is gold. And so those are some ways that helped me with um, getting better sleep. So second, when I wasn't doing making time for weekly movement, I really pared it down and I found a very easy, simple, quick routine that I could do in 10 minutes or less. Literally play two songs, ladies. Pick two songs, make an album that has two songs and you know make a little bit of time to stretch do a workout and then do a post stretch but finding ways to make it easy making it so easy that there's no way that i don't have time to do it and a lot of times this just required me to do it at home because you know making time to drive to the gym when i had a gym membership there got to a point where i just wasn't making it anymore um I just felt like I didn't have the time and so I would miss. And so finding an easy, simple workout, two songs on an album that you can play and you know it's plenty of time and so you know the beginning and the end and when it ends, you're done, right? And you move on with your day. So doing that and also instead of making it, like if I really felt like you know, things are just popping up and, you know, you just tell me, Carrie, I, I don't have time. My husband needed me for this. There was an unexpected thing at the house that I had to do. You don't understand. Um, work called and, you know, a client needs me today. And you just feel like you're getting pulled in a lot of different places and you don't feel like you can have a set weekly routine. Then I want to challenge you to create a routine not based off the day and the time, but base it off of every week, non-negotiable, I will do three workouts a week for 10 minutes. It doesn't matter what day, it doesn't matter what time, it doesn't matter if you end up waking up 15 minutes before your family and you do it then quietly with headphones on, it doesn't matter if you do it um, you know, an hour before you go to bed, it doesn't matter, even doing the microwave, if you heat up a meal for 15 to 30 seconds, while you're standing there, do 10 squats, ladies. Like fit it in, get it done, make it happen because you are worth it and your body requires it. Your body holds stress inside your body. And so in order to release that stress requires movement. So get creative and I encourage you to find ways to make it happen. So those are a couple that helped me. And then last, 
um, having poor eating habits. This happened, you know, in multiple different phases of my life. It happened, you know, in different parts of my career when I was heavy in the building phase. It happened when I had a baby and also sometimes when I was a stepmom and just feeling like I don't have time. And so going and grabbing what's easily accessible and what's convenient. And for some reason, what's easily accessible and convenient doesn't seem to be healthy. I don't know why, why? Why ladies, why can't it just be easy? I don't know, but it takes just a little bit of discipline to do things. So two ways that helped me, um, one was meal batching my lunches. I found if I couldn't control my dinners, if I at least had a healthy lunch, that changed my mood. It changed my energy. It changed how I felt. So first, starting off with that, I even, when I would go to visit my sister, <laughs> and she still talks about this to this day, she was like, I remember when you would come and visit and you would make, you know, the salads and meal batch with, you know, greens, tomatoes, and grilled chicken shredded up with a little bit of dressing. Literally, ladies, just make it so easy that there's no excuse not to do it. Like pick three ingredients. Don't overcomplicate this. Find ways to make it fun and easy. So the next level is if, because I feel like a lot of times for dinners, I feel like that's the tricky one, right? Because sometimes maybe the client had additional last minute requests, so you've got to stay late at the office. Maybe last minute your boss, because you guys have been working long hours, invites to take everyone out for a team dinner or a networking event. Um, maybe you and your family, maybe one of your kids has like a sports practice that ends up going later. And so you really don't have time to go home and cook. So you just stop by and that is, that's gonna be the best thing for you. Sometimes the best thing is to stop by and just grab takeout. But when we're doing this for all three meals, seven days a week, we start to lose our nutrients. We start to lose nourishment to our body and that how we feel affects um, you know, our mind, our emotions. And so I felt like for me, finding ways to have fit in some sort of healthy eating habits was so helpful to help me get to a better place. Um, so if you could meal batch lunches, and then if you have a little bit more time, or even ask your husband or your partner, um, you know, hey, if I can make lunches for the week for both of us, would you mind making breakfast, right? Just ask, and if they say no, okay, fine. So figure out what you can do, right? And it's all about doing things in bite sizes um, because I found if I tried to bite off more than I could chew, a lot of times it would crash and burn and I ended up just falling back to grabbing on the go and then not feeling good and feeling heavy and feeling bloated and yeah and it just it affected like how I interacted with people so it just it wasn't I found a good place to be so you know is it worth having just a little bit of discipline on the weekend to help set you up and your week up for success and if the rest of your family doesn't want to do it fine we're not going to we're not here to convince people we're not here for them to be on the same schedule you know start with yourself but you are worth it your energy is worth it your the way you feel during the week is worth it your health is worth it and so i just want to encourage you if you're experiencing any of these three signs you may be in survival mode so I hope this was helpful and gave you some fun ideas to overcome it. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.